welcome to Alive and Writing, a podcast on troubleshooting life as a writer. I'm Shatona Havig. I'm April Heyman. And I'm C.R. Rowanson. We're here. We're alive. And we're writing. All right. Clark's been talking about this L-U-T-E for months, and we wanted to share some of, you know, just really what it was all about, because I don't get the whole Renaissance music instrument thing and why he's so into it, but hey. Hey, Shatana, I don't think that's what he meant. No. It's L-U-T-E. That's loot, right? No. No, it is no. L-T-U-E. Well, if you get your acronyms right, maybe. <laughs> uh, that yeah. loot conversation, that's something we're going to have to talk about another time. L-T-U-E <laughs> stands for... We have photos. Yeah. Oh, boy. Mm. Stands for Life, the Universe, and Everything. And it's actually a writer's conference that is held every year in Provo, Utah. Cool. So... No loot. No loot. But okay. it's a writing conference. Yes, it is a writing conference. So it still helps you sing. Got it. I guess. Maybe. <laughs> so I've been talking about it a lot and referring to it a lot. So Shatona and April are kind of going to just ask me questions, and I will explain why it was so fantastic. So you're going to basically attempt to answer the questions that we're going to attempt to ask. Is that what we're doing here? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Um, so what... Okay, so L-T-Q-E. See, I got that kind of right, <laughs> sort of. So is a writing conference. Why this particular writing conference out of all the hundreds that are out there? I had a very rigorous selection process for deciding to go to L-T-U-E. First did, off... Did it involve darts and a map? No, no. Oh, okay. Like I said, this was very rigorous. I actually oh. had steps and requirements. First off, it was within 12 hours of driving time, so I didn't have to fly. Okay. That, that makes one. sense. Okay. Saves a lot of money. Step two, I had to leave so that I could go from work and actually attend this conference. Wait a minute. You I don't to... understand that yeah. one. Huh? I what? work full time. I right. had the annual leave so I could take oh, time off. Oh, annual leave. Got it. Okay. Annual leave. Yes. I was able to leave my job and go to this conference. Okay. So. And, uh, the other the other reason is it was cheap. Oh, cheap. I'm good for cheap. Cheap works for me. Yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, now we all know Clark is a cheap writing date. Got it. But we already knew that. Yeah. yeah okay. We we give him soda. Yeah. When we get together, and that <laughs> and he shows up anyway. <laughs> it works. Yeah. So that was my extremely rigorous process. Is it was within driving range. I was able to take time off of work, and I could afford it. Okay. Well. All right. So what okay. was your goal? Why Why did you What did you hope to accomplish at this thing? There were a couple things that I really wanted to do setting out. So first off, I should have included this in reasons why I picked LTUE. I met a whole bunch of people last year when I went to the Writing Excuses Cruise and Retreat. Ah, oh, that cruise again. I know, he's uh, rubbing it in. He likes to rub it in. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. So one of the people I met there was Steve Diamond, who is a horror YA fiction writer. And... One of the main things is he lives in Utah, and he was going to be at LTUE. In fact, he was helping with the majority of the panels. He was getting everything set up. So one of the main reasons I went was actually to see Steve, and that way we could just hang out and keep talking about writing. And uh, my other main goal was to just meet more people, hopefully people that I got along with as well as I did with Steve. Okay, and so did you? Oh yeah, lots of people. How did you how did you make a plan to actually meet new people then? Because this is one of the things that I know a lot of people have trouble with. They decide they want to go to these things and then they are like wallflowers. They watch everyone else mingle. How did you decide? Because I know that you're a little like me and that you're not naturally prone to jumping in the middle of something. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to help with this. I can tell you what I did. So one other thing that I want to mention is there's a lot of really, really good reasons to go to a con. So at LTUE, they had panels for days, literally for days. They had half a dozen rooms that were set up for panel discussions, and they had them running every hour for three days straight. Mm -hmm. Wow. That sounds about right for a yeah. conference, though. Yeah. It is right, but it, it still blows your mind when you really think about how many hours that is and how many panels that is. And I just think about all the organization it takes. <laughs> it's part of why Steve was really fed up by the time I got there. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, spaghetti doesn't sound so bad. It does not. <laughs> So you can go to a con to learn something. There's all sorts of information you can learn about. They have everything, depending on the ones you go to. LTU, we had tons of stuff about 
starting as a writer, description, all those standard things. I ended up attending a lot of presentations about developing your pitch and getting your query letters together and approaching editors and agents because that's the phase I'm at. Right. What um, Can you give us kind of a flavor of what some of the other ones were about? Do you remember? Yeah, so there are, they had a number of really good speakers, and some of them would talk uh, about their careers. Some One guy who was really entertaining, if you ever get to see him live anywhere, it's definitely worth listening to him. That's Michael Brent Collins. Michael Brent Collins. Or Collins. Collins. It will be in the show notes. Sorry, Michael Brent. He's <laughs> hilarious. He had one presentation that was just my 10 steps to becoming a best-selling author and the 10 years it took me to get there. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really motivational. It was really entertaining. And it was just fantastic. Some of the other good ones were um, scarcity and innovation. And talking about how scarcity of elements leads to innovation through world development. There's uh, Somebody else was talking about... I don't remember what the exact title was, but the general gist was the economics of vampirism, where they were going to talk huh. about setting up blood banks and having an economy built around the undead. Other <laughs> panels were That's talking. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Other panels were talking specifically about steampunk. Some were talking about setting up a rebellion within your your plot line. Others were talking about more general, just narrative stuff. There was so much you could go to. Wow. Now here, I was sure that this wasn't the conference for me. You've just made me want to go. Thanks. Yeah, I think. you're welcome. Well, we can all go next year. <laughs> Ooh, road trip! Road trip! Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. What? It's a business expense. Oh, it's a business expense. Uh, That's even yes. better. Yes. Yes. To you listeners, you should start learning how to track that stuff now because oh, yes. I didn't, and that was a couple thousand miles that should have gone as a business expense. And you can do it related you can to it. writing. You can still um, track the, the minimum that it would have been. You can still do it. But one other thing that I wanted to point about about cons, because we're digressing, we need to do something about business expenses at some point. We yeah. really do. Yeah. Is there's also something, it's kind of insider knowledge that if you follow enough podcasts, go to enough cons, you kind of pick this up. It's affectionately called. Bar con. Ah, oh, the bar con. Bar con? What does now, that even mean? Now, that didn't really work in Provo because a lot of the cities there are dry, so there <laughs> wasn't really a bar in the hotel. But bar con is anywhere where the people at the con go and relax, where they just sit down and they are available for conversation. Who? If there's an editor, a writer, anybody that you really like and they're there, you shouldn't corner them in the hallway or god forbid in the bathroom the number of horror stories about this kind of stuff is appalling don't do it in Elevator. other words but if they're at the bar they're there to be talked to nice so bar con is where you go and meet people so i was going for an unofficial bar con without the bar okay my goal that i set out from the beginning is i wanted to connect i wanted to have a conversation with 12 complete strangers that's kind of a round number and why 12 <laughs> and why 12 because it's even i'm an engineer and i liked it <laughs> <laughs> duly noted got it so i was there for three days 12. i figured four i could get four people yeah. a day no that's logical I, I can i can follow logic okay on these panels you, you were talking about the panels just what exactly is a panel for anybody who has never seen a panel, really what it is, is it's kind of like a podcast, but live. And oh, cool. Yeah, it has some interaction. There will be a topic, and the panel is usually just a table of experts. In this case, they're all writers, or we'll have editors, and occasionally there were agents up there as well. And it will be on a specific topic. There will be a moderator who will ask questions, and it's just these people having a conversation about the purpose of the panel which is interesting that you should bring up agents because it's time for the spotlight and i think the spotlight is on a market guide yeah yes this is actually the writer's market guide to agents and conferences if you guys haven't seen any of these books the writer's market guides are fantastic fantastic resources yes they are they really are they are amazing there's the general writer's guide uh, that i had and i found out there was one specifically for agents and conferences yes there is yeah 
and they have hundreds of cons and agents listed in those pages and it's a good place to start it's where i'm going to be crawling through the pages to start sending submissions in the very near future for me cool right it's so the internet's a great place to go for information but if you're trying to find someone really targeted uh the writer's guide is a great resource uh to start with and then you can move out from there. Right. Well, the internet's like the whole library, yeah. and this guide is one book to look in. Right. And it doesn't. Right. It doesn't get you out of doing your homework into each agent, but it will tell you who to search for. Right. And right. what they're looking for, and how to get a hold of them, and that kind of thing. And then you can move to their website and see what they're looking looking for now, that because thing. you have to remember these books come out every like, year. Yeah, they come out every year, but it's a year's process. So the things that are in the book when it comes when it's published may not always still be true. Right. They so may you have still, it may have changed. So you still have to do your homework in that case. But it's a great resource to get started. And it seems we're a little more rambly today than we usually are because I can, I just realized I didn't actually answer your question, Shatona. Sort of. <laughs> well, you asked how I set about meeting these people. Right. And this is he laid traps for them. Yes. Well, it was actually really easy. It was a target rich environment. <laughs> they were wabbits. <laughs> and he was hunting wabbits. When he you walk into wabbits. a room for a panel that you know you are interested in, that also means everybody in that room is also interested in it. Da, da, da. And there are always, if you get there early, there are always open seats. There you go. So I would go sit next to somebody, brace myself, deep breath in, deep breath out, turn to him and say, hi, how are you doing today? What is it you do? Oh, he's the weird guy. Oh, I am. Yeah, but I like the weird guy because they take all that that I don't want to do because I'm sitting there going, I should say hi. Well, I should say hi. That's actually, Why did you sit next to me? I should say hi. And then he takes it all away and then I'm fine. That's exactly what my wife said when I told her what I did. She's like, oh, you're that annoying person who I sit down and they just start talking to me. I'm like, yes. And I had some very good conversations. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, well, because we're always glad you did it once we start talking. But until we, and with that first high, we're just like, oh, it's like I'm on an airplane. I'm trapped. But well, you're not because you can get up and walk away. Panels are safe because they can leave. The panel is going to start. So I, I put some thought into this because if I talk to somebody and they start talking about alien abductions or something that I just, I don't really jive with. Once the people start talking, I can turn away from this person and we don't have to continue the conversation. It's an Yay. easy out for me and for them if I come on strong and weird, which I do. Yeah, but so. you're fun weird. <laughs> you know, that's why we all jive, because we're weird too. Or at least I am. I don't know. April seems pretty normal. So that's how I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. She's not. My sister is sitting there laughing right now. <laughs> I said seems. I said seems. It's just, it's just it's this aura she puts out. <laughs> but that's how I met the 12 people. I ended up meeting more than 12 people because once I had done it once or twice, it got significantly easier because I knew everybody was there for the same reasons I was. It's really easy when you know everybody there is as nuts about writing as you are. Right. It's, it is better than like at the airport where the person next to you could have just lost their mother and you're like, hi, how are you today? Right. Oh. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But usually the tears give it away. Um, all right. So because I'm all about planning, how did you go about planning your trip? You said it was a cheap trip. It was within driving distance. So how did you go about figuring out cost? Because we know you're a planner, too. You yeah, had it so. all figured out to the nth degree. We know this. I've actually gotten a little more relaxed about certain stuff because then I panic less when things go wrong. But more or less what <laughs> I did is I had checked out flights to um, into Salt Lake City. And it became very apparent very quickly that it was going to be cheaper for me to drive my own car. Because I would have had to drive to either L.A. or Vegas, mm -hmm. fly into Salt Lake City get a rental car and drive to Provo and then I also had the hotel that I was whatever hotel I was going to stay at at which point those 12 hours of driving each way were easily going to be cheaper I didn't have planned to a T how much that was going to cost and not much savings in time either it's three to four hours to an airport for us no okay it was going to so yeah. that's it, you've already got a quarter of that taken it was going to be a day right. of travel no matter what I did right right and really the only other thing I did I like I'm sorry this isn't super helpful 
in terms of how to do it yourself, but it just became apparent I needed to drive. So I tried to find a hotel that was close. I booked too late to get in the hotel in the conference center, but you know, wonders of the internet, I was able to find one for about half the price. Mm-hmm. It was very good and it was five minutes away. And, and usually they have shuttles going back and forth, especially when they have big events like that. So because I do plan um, trips and I have gone to conferences before, usually what I've done in the past is you go to Orbitz or you go to one of the other cheap sites and you figure out what is it going to cost me to fly? What is it the cost at today's gas rates to drive if it's within driving distance? And does it fit my lifestyle? So if I know that all my, personally, because I can't walk very far, I have have a, a minor disability that precludes me from walking long distances. So I can't go to Dallas. I can't fly through Dallas anymore. I just can't walk the distance between, um, between gates. So if I know that all my flights are going to go through Dallas, it doesn't do me any good unless I'm, unless I'm going to take like the wheelchair route, right? Which I could do. Um, but that's only if the conference is on the other side of the country, but right. it just depends. Can I drive that long? I can't. I have to have someone drive me. So my husband would have to take off time. You. So my point is you have to think ahead and really figure out what are the logistics of you traveling personally. Are you comfortable driving or are you more comfortable flying? Can you afford the cost? Can you spend more money in one area and maybe skimp on like the hotel? Are you willing to go to the Safeway or the grocery store, get some food and eat in almost every night? And now that you say that, I'm understanding this a little bit more because driving was not a big deal for me because I love audiobooks. So that was ah, yes. 24 hours of audiobooks. And I listened to most of my audiobooks at double speed. I got through three books going there nice. and back. Nice. It was nice. But when I was planning, I use a budgeting uh, budgeting program called YNAB. stands Great for program. You Need a Budget. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Basically, it lets you set aside little jars of money that you um, slowly deposit money into. So what I've gotten to more and more is I get a rough estimate of what I think everything is going to cost. I overshoot by 10, um, by 10 to 15 percent, and then I build up to that number. So when I was going to LTUE, I knew what the cost was for entrance fee. I had paid that online already. I knew what the cost for the hotel was going to be, so I could budget for that. I had an estimate for, I knew how far I could drive on a tank of gas. I could es- And this is where uh, April was talking about estimating the cost of the driving time. So with all of that, and then I just looked at how much I would need to eat day to day. So here's what I did to save money, and it saved me a lot of money is I took a cooler. I made sure that the hotel I was staying at had a refrigerator. I made my own sandwiches. I ate out once uh, the whole four days that I was there. Mm -hmm. And that saved a ton of money. So yeah, I was eating some microwave food for dinner in the hotel. But I have to tell you, at the end of a really long day at a conference, you normally don't want to go out to dinner you just want to order either if you don't have food with you you order in which is incredibly expensive or you starve yeah right especially after i spent all day absorbing information and forcing myself to talk to complete and total strangers with as much excitement and pep as i could muster by the time i got back to the hotel room i was done yeah right i i I, i'm that way on every trip that was it i had told myself (laughs) Well, I'm going to get home at night, and I'm going to be able to do some writing. No, don't, yeah, don't, don't plan even on that. Think I about it. You are going to be burned out, and that's totally okay. And that well, is normal. Well, that may not be true. If you are an extrovert, it is entirely possible that you could come back pumped up if you aren't physically tired. That's okay. So If you're just socializing, I would argue that if you're learning things, you're going to be burned out no matter what. Right. I would I would agree. But for an extrovert, socializing will is actually better for them. So going out, I would do like a bar con or maybe meet people for drinks or at the Starbucks rather than for dinner. So especially if you're trying to save money. Um, I do want to ask you one thing, which is uh, what are your three biggest takeaways from the conference? Okay, so the three biggest ones that I have, one of these comes directly from Michael Brent and his 10 steps, and it is to be interested and be interesting. 
And he talks about that more on his website. I might as well stay home. It, <laughs> it, it ties straight into the second one as well. It takes a lot of energy, but make sure that you are being interested in what other people have to say. If all you do is show up to shill your own work, people are not going to like talking to you. And we've talked about this time yeah. and time again. In fact, we're going to be talking about it later, how helping others helps you. Yep. And we'll go into that in more detail, but just go and listen. Everybody there is passionate about writing, so go listen to somebody else's passion. And then when they ask you, make sure they understand why your passion is unique and interesting. And yeah. then the other big thing is I didn't get to do, because of everything else that was going on in my life, I didn't get to plan as much as I wanted. I was freaked out, I was worried, and I was intimidated. And I went and I had so much fun. So the biggest takeaway there is when you go, get ready, but then stop worrying and just have fun. And just yeah. do it. Yeah, okay. And so what would you do diff differently then? The main thing that I would do differently is I would have worked harder to contact people before t beforehand so that it would have been a little smoother um, meeting up with people there. We had a little bit of that set up from the Writing Excuses alumni group. Yeah. We ended up meeting um, multiple nights and just chatting, which was great. I would have prepped that a little bit more so that I wasn't as much of a stranger to some of these people. Oh, well, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So next year, you're just going to introduce us to everybody so that we don't have to do all this. I hope so. Nice. I'd, I'd Excellent. really like to go awesome. next year. It was a ton of fun. Okay. And with that, we're at time. So our beloved listeners, go ahead and leave us a comment. Let us know what conferences or cons you've been to or would like to go to and any experiences you may have had or hope to have. This has been Alive in Writing. Sometimes that's all you've got, but it's all you really need. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye. Bye.